Three men. Hi, welcome. It's time for Atomic Radio Hour, episode 172. Hello, hi. I'm Vince. I'm your host. I hope you're doing well. How are you? Um, it's a special day. If you're watching this the day it comes out, it's October 23rd, meaning that it's Great War Day, meaning that October 23rd, 2077, the fictional day, is the day that created all of this behind me. And again, I'm still working on my lights and whatnot and the setup. So just give me a little bit of time. Uh, but happy Great War Day. I think this is the first time ever that an episode has come out on Great War Day. And to celebrate Great War Day, you can find me today at 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time on twitch.tv slash Atomic Radio Hour. I'm going to be streaming Fallout 3. So come hang out. Come check it out. Um, I haven't played this game in a very long time. I've like sat down and genuinely, honestly played it in a very, very long time. A few years. So I'm hoping to kind of go into it with fresh eyes, as fresh eyes as I can have. Um, being the game that I've spent the most time on <laughs> ever. Um, but come check it out, please. There's a link in the description below to the Twitch. I'm streaming to celebrate Great War Day. I hope you are doing well. I hope you can join me. Uh, I don't know. Uh, even if, even if you don't join us on Twitch, uh, I will have, I will have, uh, I will have the VOD uploaded to YouTube. I don't want to burn myself out instantly because I do have a lot of things going on, but I'd like to get to a point where at least maybe every Saturday I'm streaming. Uh, or maybe every Sunday, one day on the weekend I'm streaming, and then maybe, maybe, because I was trying to do t Tuesday for a while, maybe um, I can get it to where I'm streaming, let's say, two days a week, and then kind of go from there. But happy Great War Day. I actually don't have a ton of news. Uh, I don't have a ton of things to talk about in this first segment, just some very basic, quick stuff. Um, happy Great War Day. Today's lore is going to reflect that. I think it reflects it nicely. Um, if you'd like to hear any lore on the show, make sure you're in the Discord once a week. I ask a question, and uh, whoever answers the question right first gets to pick lore for the week. But uh, I sliced up my finger. For those who are watching, I don't know if it'll show it on camera. I sliced up my finger. It might not look like a lot on uh, on camera, but when I was at work... I put my hand into a box, and there was broken glass in the box, and it just gave me a nice, maybe like a quarter of an inch slice down my finger. And I went to the hospital, not the hospital, the uh, emergency, not the emergency room, the urgent care center, uh, because I was bleeding and it wouldn't stop. And it was like 25 minutes had gone by, and it just wasn't stopping. And uh, someone I work with is like, you should go. You should definitely go to the hospital. So I got to like go to the hospital and sit in the waiting room and hang out and... I got paid for it, which is great. I got to clock out like two hours later um, because we don't take care of our people in America. But yeah, other than that, I mean, there's some Starfield stuff. Actually, I have a friend from work who found me this clock. It's uh, it's like, like a 1930s, 40s, 50s, probably more, more the 50s than the 30s. Um, AM, FM radio found me this and I showed him my shelf before and he was like, hey man, this would look great. Look at this little antenna. Look how cute that is. This would look great on your shelf because I had shown him my shelf and I have right here, if you're watching on video, I'm trying to, again, my setup is weird right now. I'm trying to work everything out. Right here is like my little Nuka-Cola section where I have some bottles I made and then like a quantum toy and then I have the Nuka girl here and I have a couple of uh, bottle cap openers. One of them is uh, like a rarer item in my collection, but I want to put this as a part of it and if I get batteries for it, I can actually like have the radio work. And like I said, AM, FM, so I could just leave it on AM and find an oldie station and play it for the ambiance of... Of thing, but right here says Coca Cola, and what I want to do is get the this off somehow. I want to see if I can get this little piece of plastic off and measure this out and print off that says Nuka Cola and put it there. And it's like the easiest little DIY project for uh, for this sh shelf of mine. Because uh, I have some stuff that's like DIY stuff. Like I have some bottle caps and some jet canisters and uh, the Nuka-Cola bottles and stuff. Some buff out I have. But like 
I thought it was very nice of him. It was very, very kind of him. And uh, I'm going to keep it on my shelf. He's a good guy. That, I have, uh, if we could please, 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 this would mean a lot to me. We're like 25 subs, I want to say, away from 400. If you listen, if you listen on a podcasting app, thank you. You can get us anywhere you can download a podcast. Um, it's nuts to me that anybody listens to, it listens to me and Olive and now it just listens to me and occasionally Kyle. Uh, if you get us on any sort of podcasting app and aren't subscribed on YouTube, please consider subscribing. I do think the best way to, to listen to the show is by also watching it because uh, there's the extra component of this. And uh, sometimes I put gags in, like my, my bottle of wine here. Sometimes I put a gag in for that. Like it's just little small extra stuff that's fun. Uh, but we're really close to 400 subs and I would love to hit 400 before the new year or on the new year or what have you. So if you could please consider, if, you, if you're just a listener and not a watcherer, if you could consider consider going to the YouTube channel, it's just youtube.com slash Atomic Radio Hour and subscribe, please. Yeah, like I said, I don't really have much. There is something that came out um, from Skullzy, Skullzy TV, at Skullzy TV. I'll probably put a link to his Twitter here uh, on screen. But I'm just going to show off some things real quick. Um, uh, Starfield, he's in, like a known leaker, so I don't know if these are co- corroborated or no. This is also, um, this is from a trailer. Okay, cool. From a trailer that Bethesda apparently put out. Um, I'm not really keeping up to date on the Starfield stuff. So here's, if you are, here here it is. Starfield is set in the year 2330 in a fictional solar system 50 light years from our own. This system is called the Settled Systems. I really like that. Uh, and was home to a large-scale conflict between the United Colonies and the Free Star Collective. This was known as the Colony Wars. And there's some pictures I'll show, I'll show on screen of, like, a galaxy and the 50-light-year thing and the settled systems. And it says the UC versus the Free Colony War. I'm sorry, the, the Free Star Collective. They've said it's going to be more of an RPG. That's great. I want to play this. It's also going to be on Game Pass, so I'm going to play it for free regardless. Uh, so it's here. Like, there's more information. I think it comes out in like a year. I forget the exact day it comes out. Uh, hey, me. Hey, editing me. Hey, how you doing? Can you put the thing right here? Let everybody know. Cool. If you're listening on audio, I apologize. I'll try to work something so you can hear the date now. Hey, gang. Yes, man, here to say that Starfield comes out on November 11th, 2022. Cool. Thanks, editing me. So that's really it. That's really all I have um, on this, like, ancillary stuff that I do in the beginning, just to kind of bob it a goop, skip it a cream. Call your friends, guys. If you haven't heard from a friend in a while, give them a ring. I'm just trying to think of everything I got to say. So I'm going to jump into this lore. But before I jump into this lore, I got to do what I always do, and I have to thank... The Patreon. Thank you to our Patreon uh, for the show. Because of you guys, we can continue to make these 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 programs. Uh, and I have a lot of fun doing it. And it's nice to know that people care and people watch and people enjoy. Uh, there's some people we have to thank quick who have supported the show. Uh, starting from the tippity tippity top with the OG Noah. Thank you, Noah. After Noah, we have to thank Danny. Thank you, Danny. And third, we have to thank Marcus. Thank you, Marcus. Again, because of your continued support, I continue to do this. I continue to have fun. Um, I can, if I wanted to, I could buy some equipment. Um, I don't know what I want to do. I kind of want to buy a better um, version of my editing software. Um, but if I do, I'm not sure if I'm going to, because uh, I can use the free stuff and it works f- perfectly fine. Either way, if I do that or not, it's great to know that I have the support of you fine, fine folks here. So thank you. But now it is time to get into the lore. And like I said prior, every every week I ask a question. And this week's question in the Discord was I'm thinking of a kitchen utensil. First person to get it picks the lore. I was thinking of a cheese grater. I also would have taken a box grater or a microplane. But kitchen utensil, cheese grater. The Tubby Master, a fellow UK homie, picked it. Got it. We are here today to hear what the Tubby Master wanted to hear. 
Um, so if you want to hear any lore, again, if you want to hear any lore, just make sure you're in the Discord. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I ask question. First person to get the question right gets to pick lore for the week. And this week's lore is on the Sierra Madre. Now, if you're a longtime listener, or maybe even if you're just a listener of a few weeks, you might know that I love the Madre. I love Dead Money. Dead Money is by far my favorite DLC um, for New Vegas. So... When the Tubster brought up the Madre, I was, yeah, that's, I can do that right away. Uh, some of it will be here in my notes, and some of it I want to get perfectly accurate. So it will be uh, read off the wiki, and I get all of my lore off of fallout.fandom.com. Now, the Sierra Madre, a pre war casino resort now surrounded by a poisonous cloud. Many have heard the woman's voice that beckons to them, to the Madre, only for them to never be seen again. Frederick Sinclair is the designer and the man who put together uh, the building teams for not only the Madre, the casino, the Madre, but also the villa that surrounds it. Work started a few years before the Great War had begun. He wanted patrons to reverse their fortunes and begin again. Throughout its entire lifespan of its work, it became a reclusive place. All commerce and conveniences were supplied with special vending machines. These vending machines provided commercial and non-commercial services. Even though they were cut off from the outside world, residents could live comfortably. The idea was not to build a casino, but a shelter to protect them from a nuclear holocaust. Now, this is kind of like this, like, nepotism. I don't want to say nepotism. It is kind of nepotism, but it's this, like... There's a vault... The vault from... Far Harbor, which the number escapes me right now, where it was just kind of like this bourgeois vault that like only the rich and powerful were at. This is kind of what the Madre was going to be, but not a vault. Uh, but I'd like to believe maybe it would have been like the smart people and not just the people with the money. So we'll get into a little bit more later, uh, especially when I talk about the chefs. The architecture Sinclair was drawn to was Art Deco for both the casino and the villa. And what I love about the Art Deco style is it is so timeless, yet it's so very much like a 50s thing. Like when you see it, you're like, oh, that's like, maybe it's just me. But every time I see Art Deco art, I think of my life as a teenage robot, the Nickelodeon show. At least it was on Nickelodeon in the States. Uh, because I remember being enamored with that show because one female robot lead, but also the art deco style. I couldn't tell if it was the future. I couldn't tell if it was the past. I just like the, the backgrounds of that. If you get a chance, look up my life as a teenager robot backgrounds. That show was worth it for the backgrounds alone. And Eartha Kit plays a bad guy for a perfect open. I don't understand why this was like stated exactly. Um, I think it has to do with the holograms that we'll talk about a little later. But again, I know there's like a meme of me saying like, hey, the wiki's not written great, but this one just kind of seemed there. For a perfect opening gala, Sinclair strengthened the frequency emissions of the radio frequencies. That's really it. And that sounds redundant when I read it back. So I don't really understand if it doesn't say explicitly this was for the holograms for the security. Again, I'll be getting into that in a moment. The kitchen uh, was made for the Madre aimed for five stars. Now, I tried looking up real quick and I won't lie to you. I didn't do a lot of research. Uh, what the difference between a five star restaurant and a three star Michelin star is. Uh, and I couldn't really find anything other than Michelin is like the way it was was written was like, you should make a stop to this restaurant. Like, stop everything you're doing. Take a trip. This is a big deal. Do this. Uh, but five-star, five-star chefs, Sinclair was to bring in only the finest of the fine. Uh, and I think that's more of like, he wasn't pulling in people that were money powerful, but people that were powerful with their minds, maybe, and creativity. I like to believe that's what it is. I want to believe in the best, but I'm probably wrong i don't know it's it's the fallout universe so everybody's just a greedy fuck. <laughs> to meet deadlines two companies came in to construct the villa and the casino a well-rated one for the casino and a less rated one for the villa and this caused many problems which i'll touch on in a bit sinclair forbode anyone 
any sort of foreign substance, any chem, any or any alcohol, and this created a black market, much like any restriction of anything does. Security known was to search the Puesta del Sol construction offices and confiscate anything prohibited. Now, when I was reading this and writing these notes, it made me think, if you're living in a house, if you're living if you work in a structure uh or live in a house, especially like back home where I where the small town in Pennsylvania that I'm from, I saw a lot of homes being constructed. I did a lot of like construction around construction work. Uh those dudes are bombed. Those dudes are smoking reefers. Uh, those dudes are drinking. Those dudes are probably doing pills or something. Your house was made by a team of drunks. <laughs> like, unless you live in a Mormon society or an Amish society, maybe even then. I don't know if they drink. But, like, there is no doubt in my mind at least one person working on your house was bombed the whole time. Sinclair was obsessed with security, and this probably comes from his own financial losses that he suffered in the 2070s. Holograms were constructed to only be used by him for security. So when he bought the rights to use them, it was just for him to have. Uh, the Madre's doors were hermetically sealed, and the speakers were shielded to protect, vandal- protect from vandalism. The casino and resort of the Madre had an automated front desk that escorted guests to their rooms and removed all contraband items and any item that was affected by any sort of radiation. In return for tech supplied by the Big Mount by Big Mountain, Sinclair agreed to have the casino and villa be a testing grounds for various experiments, such as saturnite alloy hazmat suits and prototype matter recombinators, which are the vending machines. Like I said, I want to read a lot of this, or not a lot of it, a decent chunk off of uh, the wiki. Sinclair was oblivious to the fact that previous similar deals did not end well. As was the case with Hopeville, as it is a disastrous meteorological research project. In the Sierra Madre, the catch came in the form of a cloud, a strange toxin created in the the, the laboratories, the laboratories of Big Mountain. In addition to the main area, the villa was comprised of four districts. The medical district, Puesta del Sol, which witnessed numerous crashes and arguments involving... The casino construction crews, construction lagged behind Salida del Sol. The construction efforts seemed to have exhausted momentum and money. Residence district for the casino's high rollers and entertainers, and Salida del Sol, the home of the church and many of the casino's staff. To avoid having to spend much money of the construction of the villa at the expense of the casino it was poorly constructed the material used for the villa's construction was described as sand barely held together with spit and glue bindings and structures in the villa were completely unstable and could collapse overnight all of this caused construction crews to suffer numerous setbacks and accidents to prevent the employees of the Madre from discovering these facts, senior persons destroyed all medical reports and were also protected legally. In addition, shipping problems plagued the villa. Construction explosives, countless crates of steak knives, and more were shipped to the villa, paid for, and left. Now, for the casino itself, the casino is more than a mere casino and resort. It is the material testament to one man's inability to let go. Seeing the Great War nearing, Frederick Sinclair, the chief architect and financer of the Grand Fortress, wished to save the love of his life, Vera Keys, from the looming destruction. To th- to this end, the Sierra Madre Villa and its capstone casino were built. But that was not enough for Sinclair. Deep within the basement of the casino, a nearly impenetrable vault was constructed as well to make sure that he and his love could ride out the apocalypse together. Security was at the utmost and N.E. was contracted to provide it. Doesn't say what N.E. is. I'm assuming that's some security company, but it doesn't have a link that I can click on because when I was reading this the first time I was like what's that didn't explain it anything foreign or unauthorized that entered the casino was detected by security 
was instantly rendered comatose and moved to another location within the hotel. Further into the casino, an emergency broadcast emitter could be triggered, and the myriad of holograms designed specifically for Sinclair would activate, patrol the casino and executive suites, and exercise lethal force on unauthorized visitors to protect the hotel guest under their charge. The entire casino was also lined with metal that interferes with radio reception and broadcasts out of the casino. This was put into place to ensure that the radio frequencies from within the casino would not interfere with the hologram beacon in the villa, which would send out emergency signals so others would be alerted to Mrs. Key's presence in the casino. After all this preparation, Sinclair failed to anticipate one thing. Vera's complicity with lounge singer Dean Domino's plot to break Sinclair's heart and steal the treasure of the Sierra Madre for themselves. Domino had enlisted her aid in his planned heist, later blackmailing her with evidence of her medex addiction, completely unaware that she was terminally ill. The news broke Sinclair's heart, and he became embittered and vengeful, transforming his shelter into a trap, ensuring the elevator down to the vault only went in one direction, and upgrading his security hologram to make sure that rescue would never come for Vera and Domino. After Vera broke down and confessed everything to Sinclair, fearing he had overstepped himself, did what he could do to revert to reverse these changes but he could only do so much and the casino remained a death trap he died in the vault unable to return to the casino and his love the guests would meet a similar fate while the great war occurred outside they were slaughtered by the automa automated security their last calls for help recorded by the system Vera Keys instead met her fate in her hotel room. Her last words to Sinclair were recorded by the system, her holographic form and last words living on as ghosts in the executive suites. She chose to take her own life using the drugs that kept her alive after writing her final words, let go. When the second crew arrived in 2281, the casino woke again. Its automated security shutting down as other automations started back up. Its pre-recorded music and audio files began to play, albeit now on deteriorated equipment. This proved inconvenient as these unwilling heist members were still wearing their explosive collars which interfered with her signal to Elijah. Meanwhile, the ghost people gathered at the casino, attempting to get in. After the courier was able to establish a connection one to one of the other floors and access a piece of the music archives, they find a way in with a more gathering of subsequent floors that later got reconnected. Now, the cloud. Created as an experiment by the Big Mountain execs, the cloud was a product of the Z43 innovative toxin plants located in the crater. When Frederick Sinclair came to Big Mountain for technology to purchase for the Madre, he unwillingly signed a Faustian pact. Great. Ah, man, that's a good book. I remember reading that, or short story, I remember reading that in high school, and I liked it. Apart from the holograms and matter recombinators, the think tank would also place the cloud at the Sierra Madre using the casino and the villa and its inhabitants as guinea pigs in the experiments. Sinclair likely saw no other way to get the technology that he needed, as he was already teetering on the brink of bankruptcy when he started negotiating with executives. Of course, he was not informed that he would be receiving more than just harmless prototypes. The Sierra Madre was the only testing ground that would be protected, protected by the cloud, which was hardly a prize. Cloud manifests itself for the first time when the cheap villa ventilation system ground to a halt. A victim of cutting corners and Mr. Yesterday's dubious practices, pipes backed up, spewing out the red cloud. Workers in the area started choking and vomiting, hospitalizing the villa's clinic. The damage to their health was extensive enough to put them out of commission for good. To deal with the problem, Sinclair negotiated with Big Mountain executives for yet another technology, the Dark Light Hazmat Suit, which you can find in Old World Blues, like you could find the ghost suit there. Although considered creepy by the maintenance crews, they allowed crews to explore ventilation systems and try in vain to identify the source of the cloud. 
The team managed to find the source of the problem in the main ventilation pipe. However, traces of the dust cloud were present and eroded the material of the suit's locks, exposing them to the cloud and sealing them within. The crewmen retreated and headed to the Villa Clinic to get medical attention. Much to the, the displeasure of the attending physician, they cut themselves out of suits with the steak knives. However, despite the problems, the ventilation system was eventually restored to barely functioning order. When the Great War hit shortly afterward, it was continued to it continued to work for a few more years before finally giving up the ghost. It's actually well written. Good job, Wiki. The cloud gradually seeped into the area, climbing out of the damage vents, eventually blanketing the area, area, blotting out the sun. It became a grim, uncompromising guardian of its secrets. The maintenance crews who donned their hazmat suits and tried to fight it succumbed to its effect, mutating and becoming the violent savage guardians of the Madre. For centuries, the cloud protected the casino and the villa, killing scavengers or weakening them so that become another victim of the tribe inhabiting it, the hazmat-suited ghost people. It wasn't until the 23rd century that it became important once again. Father Elijah, a disgraced Brotherhood of Steel elder, learned of its existence from Ulysses, and it inspired him. When primary samples were taken from the air on the edge of the Madre, yielded promising results, he set up a chemistry, chemistry set to allow it to replenish itself and travel to the Madre in person to perform research on site. Upon further research, Father Elijah decided to weaponize the cloud as a, a weapon of mass destruction to wipe the slate clean. It was intended to be used to reclaim the Mojave and destroy the NCR. He also plans to use it as an offensive technology, unleashing it upon the Mojave, cutting it off from the rest of the world. He could then use modified Repcon rockets to push both the New California Republic and Caesar's Legion at the Hoover Dam, and finally let traces of it drift into West NCR territory. Now... I think I went over it a little bit when I did the Father Elijah lore, but he wanted to, like, rebuild the wasteland and have him as, like, the dude in charge and have the holograms kind of patrol everything because he could, like, retro-engineer it and then have the uh, vending machines kind of, like, take over, if that makes any sense. And in the sense... Hold on, let me rephrase that. Have the... Vending machines take over in the sense of you could have them everywhere and he would be making the amount of money and people could get. Because, like, the technology of the vending machines is incredible. And it's wild that, like, anything like that even exists. Just some, some notes, some fun facts, if you will. On the side of the Nevada Highway Patrol Station, graffiti is scrawled and it reads, I wish I was at the Sierra Madre with a crying sad face painted next to it. It appears whether dead money has been installed or not. There's a couple things like this that I do really like that um, I do and I don't like. I like that it's there, but I don't like that it was there and then became DLC. Um, my first thought is, hey, this is like just should have been in the game but they had 18 months to make it and that's probably why it became dlc and i'm just happy it exists at all spray painted on the corvega billboard across from the junction 15 railway station is graffitied gone to sierra madre nearby written on the back of the of an elevated lucky 38 billboard closer to sloan is the phrase left my heart in the sierra madre in the abandoned Brotherhood of Steel bunker, there is a message saying gone to Sierra Madre on the shack wall before going down the stairs. There is also graffiti sa that says Sierra Madre, but it's spelled wrong. That's really funny. It's S-E-E-R-A, Sierra, uh, above the door, the first door in the bunker. In the East Pump Station, there is a poster on the wall on the locker saying Sierra Madre with a woman relaxing in an evening gown and the words begin... Again, written on it. That's a five-period ellipses. Okay. Uh, that's probably from the game because it's it's quoted. Also in the station are two postcard size versions on a bulletin board next to the computer terminal. The postcards are of the woman, same woman, relaxing with a cocktail. There are also posters of the Sierra Madre located in the Monte Carlo Suites. God, the super mutant, who's also dog, says that the air in the Sierra Madre tastes like copper or old world gold. 
Once the quest triggered, the gala event has been completed. A nuclear silo will be heard in the Sierra Madre for the rest of the add-on. Yeah, that is really annoying. I forgot about that. No, this is one that's really tight. The New California Republic has a military accolade named the Star of Sierra Madre. So Star of Sierra Madre is a medal awarded by the New California Republic Army and is considered to be one of the Republic's highest honors for valor and bravery shown during the conflict at Camp Forlorn Hope. The award was presented by PFC Jeremy Watson to pres- by President Kimball on behalf of the Senate and the people of the NCR. The president notes that when Watson's platoon came under attack at Forlorn Hope, he took the greatest of risks and was prepared to make the most noble of sacrifices to defend the principles of the Republic. Let's find out a little bit about our boy Jeremy Watson real quick. Holy shit, I didn't even realize this. Cool. Born in a tin shack, this is on Jeremy Watson real quick. Born in a tin shack on the outskirts of Old Pine, Jeremy Watson led a difficult life. His father worked on a caravan on the short loop, and his mother braved ruins as a prospector. The family suffered through water shortages, raider attacks, and the NCR war with the Brotherhood of Steel. When he was young, his mother left him on a farm to head out prospecting, and she never returned. The owner of the farm made him leave, but afterwards, he was approached by a man asking him if he was interested in joining the NCR, which he did. Several years later, while stationed at Camp Forlorn Hope, several years later, he was stationed at Camp Forlorn Hope, where his platoon was attacked. He took a risk to save them. He was then awarded the Star of Sierra Madre for his act of bravery, of which he would receive from President Kimball after his speech at Hoover Dam. I didn't even realize this is him. I didn't even realize this is You'll Know When It Happens. I didn't realize it was that quest. That's so cool. God, everything in this game is connected. Yeah, I thought this dude was like an idiot when you meet him, but he's kind of cool. Kind of cool that he's connected to all this stuff. Gang shit. So some behind the scenes, the Sierra Madre is a reference to the B Tavern's 1920 Western novel and later a 1948 film adapta- adaptation uh, by directed by John Hudson, The Treasure of the Sierra Madre. Sierra Madre translates from Spanish to Mother Mountain Range. I'm not sure where, but the audio got a little messy here. Not sure why. It should be cleaned up by the next episode. I did my best to work with what I could now. I love the Sierra Madre. I it's my it's my one of my favorite locations in the entire series. Um to learn about I just love the intro. I've told the story before. I know I've told the story before. I was kind of reading some old text messages um from people that I'm just not friends with any longer. And I was like, fuck it. I wanna play I wanna play New Vegas again and I downloaded it and I'm trying to hook up a controller and make everything work and whatnot. And I'm reading these text messages kind of as the intro is, is playing. And I just hear father Elijah saying the hard part isn't finding it. It's letting go the symbolism of it. The whole, like, don't take the money. The point is not the money. The point is to be like all these things. The fact that dog is like, I need to find master. And it's quite literally the master from the first game. There's a lot of great things. Dean Domino being shown to you the entire game. The DLC comes out through posters and the DLC comes out and he's actually there. You can speak with him. Christine is a fantastic character. There is a way to get the gold out, which defeats the purpose. And I don't think I've ever done it. I think I tried it on a stream once, but never did it. If you haven't played the Sierra Madre, please do. I hope this has been enough to tell you a little bit about it, but just play Dead Money. It is what is up. It is the place to be. It is the thing to do. I think that is lore. Hey, everybody. Like I said, I don't have a lot. I um, didn't have a great weekend, actually. I had kind of a bad weekend, I I guess is what the kids would say. Um, I don't... I guess I just don't do as well as I thought I did at parties. And I actually got invited to a dinner party and I had a fantastic time. Like we sat around and like told stories and like learned about each other and shared feelings and whatnot and all that whack shit that I'm super into. 
But I don't know. There's something about leaving a party that's just not good for me, I guess. That is just this overwhelming, like, sense of dread. I don't mean dread in the sense of, like, I'm scared. But, like, I don't even know how to explain it. Just this overwhelming sense of, like, it's over. But, like, not that I'm sad that it's over because everything ends. Like, I don't even know how to explain it. Like, I just leave a party and... Maybe it's just my dopamine has been released. Like I released everything I have. Maybe what I'm realizing from from this little one sided therapy session that I'm having with myself. Thank you for joining me. Is that I'm more of an introvert than I thought I was, and I've always kind of said that I was an antisocial extrovert, meaning that like, which is from a Kendrick song. I don't remember which one, but it's from a Kendrick song, where he would kind of say like he would say that meaning. I like to be around people like I'm very extroverted. Like I can sit there and talk. And I mean, I have a podcast and the fact that when the the other host left, I continued it by myself, I think proves that I'm an extroverted character. Not that I'm trying to prove anything, but whatever. I think that is kind of, but, but like also at the same time, like I don't want to be around a ton of people. Like when I go to work, I like to just kind of be by myself and just do my own thing. I don't need everybody around me. Um, I think it also comes probably from a little bit of that. I've never really felt like I never felt young. Like I've never felt like I've been around people my age, if that makes sense. Like I've been around people that are physically born the same year as me or close in age. But like, I don't know. I never felt like a kid. Like I always felt like an old man, which isn't a bad thing. I'm not upset about it. It's just, uh, you know. The thing I've noticed. It's my favorite thing about get the thing I've noticed that I really like about getting older, like <laughs> is that I can sit there and stare at a piece of furniture and go, my God, is that a nice piece? I was in a store with a friend and we were looking at this like trunk. It was like a trunk bench thing that like it looked like it was from the 50s. Like it was kind of art deco y <laughs> to reference last segment. Uh it was kind of art deco y and like it lifted up and had a key and like when it came up there was these two like slats and these two slats were velvet so you could put like your jewelry there and then underneath you could put like some shoes or some scarves or something really beautiful piece and we sat there looking at it for like five to ten minutes and there was a point where i looked at my friend and was like you know, this is what being an adult is like your back hurts. You're always tired. And you look at a piece of furniture and go, my, like that meme of that dude petting the cat. Oh, a cat could take a per, take a pet. Like no problem. That that's how I felt about furniture, but I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot of, I think maybe, maybe, maybe if there's anything I've learned through therapy is that expectation is like the number one thing that gets us disappointed. And maybe that's just what it was for me in, in that, that thing is that I had an expectation. Um, and I've also learned that having no expectation is still an expectation. You still have something you're expecting. Expecting nothing is still to expect something. Uh, and when I was told that, I kind of t- thought of the Buddhist mantra or philosophy is the only want is to want nothing at all. You still want something. You just want nothing. So you still have that that need, I guess. No, it's not a need. It's a want. Like you still have that want for something, but that something is nothing. No, not, no materials, uh, no vanity pieces. Somewhere maybe to sl- like somewhere to sleep and something to eat is like that's still something, but it's nothing in the sense is it's minimalistic. Maybe I'm interpreting that way too literally. That's a huge possibility. I don't know. Just. I don't know. I, I I think I was excited and expecting so much. It's like the first like thing that I've been invited to since COVID started. Like I can remember like the last time I went out right before COVID started. It was like right around New Year's, like 2020 New Year's. And then I started working nights and there was some other stuff going on. So I like remember not really doing much. And I think maybe, maybe that's it. Maybe that's just it. And maybe it was just an expectation thing. I also think it's healthy to just talk. Um, again, like I've been trying to say, call your friends. There's a lot of, there's a lot of undiagnosed mental illness, uh, a lot of undiagnosed mental disorders with adults I'm finding as I get older. Um, 
but like there's a lot of people that you probably don't know that are miserable uh i've reconnected with a with a with another new friend and a guy who i really barely even knew but reached out we started talking again and he was telling me that he's like i don't think it was he was doing it for attention because he didn't he didn't open with it but you know you make one joke about a a, a, the a rope snapping and it leads to 14 other places in someone's mind and like he just kind of told me he's like i'm not good right now. I'm trying to reach out to talk to people. I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do that. And I commended him. I thought, you know what? That's, it's hard to do. Even when you have a great support group. So like this for, for, I understand this isn't everybody's predicament, but for some people, the only person they have to talk to is a parent or a grandparent or an uncle, like someone, a family member, somebody that you're, um, I don't want to say inherently close to, but someone who you're close to. And, you could argue cares about you is what I'm getting at. And to tell them that you're hurting sometimes doesn't help just because they go into a defensive mode. They're like, we have to protect this person. We have to do this. We have to do that. Or maybe they'll say something like something that's not productive, like just stop thinking about it. And you know, that's not like, oh my God, I just hate being alive. Can't stand it. Every second of every day sucks. Well, have you have you tried not thinking about that? That was the first thing I thought of, Bucko. Like, it's just, it's one of those things. And I guess that's why, like, discords are kind of popping off, too. Link in the description below to the discord. Come bitch and moan. <laughs> um, I think that's kind of why, like, discords and reddits and even 4chan to some extent has kind of popped off exponentially since the the beginning of forums was just, it's a community. It's a community that accepts people. And it's almost in the sense of like a therapist where a therapist is an unbiased person to speak to. Uh, please see a therapist. If you have the means, if you have health insurance, if you live in the States and have health insurance, please see a therapist. Even if you don't think anything is wrong, it is nice to speak to somebody who is unbiased and is trained to listen to what you have to say and then regurgitate back to you something that makes sense. I am the biggest, what's the word I want to use? I am the biggest advocate that I know for therapy. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Crazy people don't go to therapy. People go to therapy. Human beings go to therapy. It is nice to sit down. It is nice to talk. And if you learn something about yourself, you learn something about yourself. A good therapist won't push their ideas or agenda, which I, don't, I, I hate that word, but they won't push that onto you. And sometimes, like I said, it's hard. It's hard because I think a lot of people, it's hard for you to go to a friend and tell them that you're hurting because I think a lot of them, if they care about you, go into a defensive mode, like I said, and think, what can I do to help or fix this person? Which isn't an idea that's born out of malice. It's just an idea that isn't as productive as it could be because you're getting your own biases in the way. So I don't know where that all came from. I hope you enjoyed it. But that was my little, that was the Vince little therapy corner. Happy Great War Day, everybody. Again, if you're still here, thank you. I hope you are doing well. It is Great War Day, like I said. Please join me. There is a link in the description below, twitch.tv slash Atomic Radio Hour. I will be streaming my favorite game of all time. I do not know how long I will be streaming it for, but I am streaming Fallout 3 at 5. That fucking imposter character who keeps like acting like me apparently is streaming Fallout 3. I don't know where he got the idea because I said I, I said I wasn't originally and now he's doing I, I don't. So join us, me us join me for a fallout 3 stream and i want to play the whole game i want to beat the game i want to play it i just want to replay it again i want to do all the dlc again i want to hit level 30 i i don't like mods and i might put a mod in to go to level 50 that's how excited i am uh please join me 
Uh, oh, what I, what I meant to say earlier and didn't, and I should have, every decision that has to be made, am I going with this way or am I going that way? Am I doing this? Am I doing that? Is going to be made by the chat. I'm doing completely what the chat wants to do. Hopefully we get to do something I've never done before. Even though I've played thousands of hours of Fallout 3, there's still plenty of stuff that I haven't done. There's still stuff that I've only done once or twice. I make a point to go to Dunwich. I want to do the superhuman gambit again. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that I really, really want to do. I want to do hard Darkness's quest line, the Replicated Man quest line. Please join me. Happy Great War Day. I hope you were safe. I hope you were happy. I hope you like pirates. If you like our intro music, I hope you like our intro music. And if you do, you can get it at silvermansounds.com slash free music slash feather duster, where you can find feather duster, our intro song, but also a slew of other heaters from the one, the only Shane Ivers. Make sure you join the Discord if you want to hear any sort of lore. I ask a question once a week. First person to get the question right picks our lore. Thank you to the Patreon for supporting me, supporting the show. Uh, thank you to anybody who's ever bought anything or plans to buy anything off the Redbubble. If you'd like to support in a smaller way, any sort of support is appreciated. Leave a comment, leave a like, tell a friend. I'd love to hit 400 subs by, the, by 2022. Thank you for being here. I'm going to go now. If you're watching this, seriously, if you're watching this the day it comes out, Fallout 3, I am streaming it. It will work. And then I'm going to upload it. I hope I didn't just jinx myself. Knock on wood. Hold on. I will upload it to YouTube, and you'll be able to watch the full stream. I don't know how long the full stream is going to be. I like doing three-hour streams. It's Fallout 3. If it goes longer, I'm not upset. I want to play the shit out of this game because I love it. It's my favorite game ever. I hope you have a great week. I hope you have a great day. I hope something that you love makes you smile. I hope somebody t somebody kisses you on the cheek. I just hope, I hope that happens to you. Bye, everybody. Be safe. Atomic Radio Hour Podcast. A Ghoulman Entertainment Production.